Hey guys, welcome back to Fans Hell here in Auckland, New Zealand. Following on from our first two episodes in our How To series, the next one up is how to knock your cricket bat in at home. So if that's something you're looking to get started on, if you've just purchased a new cricket bat, make sure you stay tuned as we get as we let you know all the steps you need to follow to get your bat ready for match play. So to follow along, you're going to need the following items. Um, a hardwood mallet. These ones have a really nice short um, base on them, really nice heavy head. Um, so I'd recommend picking one of these up. Also available through our website. You've got just some raw linseed oil, bat wax if you're not going to be using a facing. Also great on all the exposed timber and just a piece of sandpaper, about 150 to 180 grit. And that's what we're going to use to get started. So the first step is removing the polish. So when the, when the bat's manufactured, it's always got a coat of polish um, right across the whole bat. That's used just to seal it off. So when it's on the shelf um, in storage, it's not going to get any moisture, um, any excess moisture getting into the bat. So we really just sand this kind of just a coat of polish off just before we oil it, which will allow the oil to soak in properly. So all we do just by hand, you don't need any um, electric sander for this. Just a nice clean piece of sandpaper and all we're going to do is just go along along the grain. Just up to below the stickers. Don't go over the stickers otherwise you'll scratch them. Really simple, just to remove that first that um, top coat of polish and the next step is applying our linseed oil. So with linseed oil, your first coat, um, we usually put about a teaspoon on, so you'll see here, we just put it straight on. Don't worry about using a rag, um, you want to try and avoid rags with linseed oil as it can become um, flammable. So just, just use your fingers right on and all we're doing is not going over the edges at this point. All we're doing just right up and down the playing surface. You see it's still a bit dry. If you can't, you, you want a little bit of a sheen when we're going to leave it overnight. So I'll put a bit more on. You'll probably notice as well that the heartwood, which is this, this darker side of the wood, will absorb a little bit more linseed oil. So if, if you need to, just put a bit more on that side as well. You just want a nice even coat, which is we're going to let dry overnight. Cool, just like that. So once we've applied that first coat of oil, we need to let it dry overnight. So you just want to set yourself up at home with something that we can place the bat on that's going to be nice and level. Um, obviously we don't want the toe to be rocking around, so really simple, just two, two kind of blocks of wood or something like that, and leave that to dry overnight. I sorted this one out yesterday, so we're going to get started knocking this one in by hand um, and going over all the steps you need to follow. So we're going to get started on knocking this bat in now. I would recommend just getting your phone and setting a timer. Usually we just do short, sharp bursts of around two to three minutes, and then we're going to kind of work up from there. If you just go for kind of a long kind of 10, 15 minute periods at a time, you'll likely get tired and you'll kind of reduce the impact you're having um, and the accuracy you're able to achieve. So really short two, three minute um, bursts. I would recommend spending 15 minutes on each edge and then 15 minutes on the toe. So that gives you kind of 45 minutes there and then spend about half an hour um, through, the, through, that, um, through the face of the bat. So we're gonna get started um, with this edge first. I hold the bat um, generally up around obviously that area. Generally, if you hold the handle and you start hitting the bat, um, you're gonna get a lot of give. So that's reducing the amount of, um, basically the, the stroke and the power you're actually um, giving to the, to the bat. So generally we hold it up around, um, obviously the back around the splice area, and then that just gives you a lot more accuracy. The bat's a lot closer to your, to your hand as well. So let's set that timer, and you can just follow along um, and watch kind of how I knock the bat in. So 
So you can see we're really starting off quite um, soft. On the edge, we slowly want to roll them over a bit. You never want to go kind of beyond that much of an angle, otherwise you'll start getting a lot of cracks. So we're really, we're rolling it over, but we're kind of rolling it off on that angle, um, slowly working our, our way up and down. And the key thing is actually noticing where you're hitting. If it should be making some sort of impression. If you're not, you're probably not hitting it hard enough. Um, don't be afraid of seeing slight little small surface cracks. If you do, just slow it down, bring that, um, that power back, and then just slowly work your way up and down, um, slowly increasing the pace. So let's continue. Cool. You may also notice that um, I go on one angle, um, so I go a little bit higher and then I work back across the face to kind of even that up. So I'm going high through that, through that area, and then I come back across the face and then you continue to do that as those edges um, slowly round off. So once you've done 15 minutes on that edge, you do, then do the next, um, obviously repeat that process on the other edge, and then we would move on to working on the toe. So again, just moving your hand a little bit further down. Um, we generally get yourself comfortable, get yourself in a nice position where you can feel comfortable sitting for that um, kind of either 10, 10 minute period where the bat's not moving around too much. Um, you can kind of tuck it in on your hip and then it's again, not gonna give kind of too much resistance and your, your power and accuracy will be improve. So let's start on the toe again, just nice and slow to start off with and then we'll start increasing the pace. And the, really the key areas, which you've probably seen, you may have had previous bats where they have a lot of damage through the toe area. You really want to focus around those corners and then slowly building the power up um, as you go. Cool, and once you get to a stage where you really can't see you're making much of an impression anymore, once you've got it to about that way up the face, you've spent that time on the edge and the toe, we'll now move into the sweet spot. With that, all we're doing is kind of working out, you should see an impression where in the toe, we're just working that impression right up back off the face, um, and obviously working it out to the edges as well. So you may want to start, um, sometime if you want to, you can put a rubber band, a few rubber bands across, and it will just get you to focus on one area, doing it properly, and then you move on to the next. So if you put a rubber band across um, a few centimetres up, um, then just focus like this. And then we're slowly moving the impression from the dent. We're just moving that slightly up as we go. Make sure you put that timer on. Spend about five minutes there. Work it a little bit up, five minutes, until you're all the way up the face. Um, and then that will really complete your hand knocking. The next step after you've um, finished your hand knocking in is to apply some bat wax. So we'll go back to the, to the workbench um, and apply that. Then we'll get over to these steps and how to get started in the nets. So once you've gotten the bat to a stage where you think you've knocked it in um, as far as you can, you've spent that time focusing on the edge toe and the face, the next step is to either apply a facing or bat wax. If you're going to apply a facing, um, make sure you give our one of our previous videos a watch. We'll leave that in the description. It's just called um, how, to, how to remove and replace a facing at home. So that follow along there, um, we would recommend giving the sand first before applying a light coat of linseed oil in your new face. But if you're not going to be putting on a face, I would highly recommend putting on some um, bat wax. So the bat wax has, um, 
Obviously the wax in it helps to repel excess moisture and dirt, opposed to just linseed oil itself. It's got both in there. And the benefit of the, the wax is we can't apply too much because any excess will just sit on top and we just wipe it off. So you just get a little bit in your, on your finger like that and we're just putting it on the face and any exposed limbs. So you can put this on the back and the edges as well. So just like that, use your fingers on the, all the exposed timber as well and we're just going to leave that half an hour and then give it a buff um, just with a nice clean cloth. So we've let it dry for about half an hour and now we're just giving it that um, buff just to remove any excess that was sitting on top. So after you've applied that wax the next thing is to head off to the nets. So I'd highly recommend starting off with older balls. You want something with a, um, a softer seam and just start off with some lighter throwdowns. If you can see any seam indentations on the plane surface, slow down that pace. Um, and if you can see any kind of larger dents, you probably need to work back to, the, um, to working and knocking it in with a mallet. But you may notice um, small seam indentations, that's fine. You just want to um, slow that pace down and then start working up again until you can't see any new seam indentations from throwdowns appearing. You then just continue to build up the, uh, the pace and the newness of the ball until you're using basically a brand new ball and you're not seeing any seam indentations or anything like that. Um, and yeah, so that finishes off your, your knocking in process. As mentioned previously, th these three items, your knocking in mallet, um, your bat wax and linseed oil are all available on our website. Um, otherwise, if you're not confident to do this at home, we knock in thousands of bats a year. Our process is a little bit different. We still do all the knocking in of the edges and toe by hand, um, but we then have a knocking in machine which applies about 20,000 knocks to the entire playing surface. Um, so it does a really comprehensive job. But yeah, if you're not confident, we offer that service. But I hope this video helped if you're looking to do this at home. Um, and yeah, that finishes off this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for the next one.